Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, I'm going to be covering the lysosomal storage diseases or sphingolipidoses, and the video is going to focus on Tay Sachs, Gaucher, and Neiman Pick. This is the fifth video in my set of six videos covering the biochem section, so I suggest you check out the rest of these if you haven't done so already. Sphingolipids are an important part of the cell membrane. However, if they are not metabolized properly because of some sort of genetic disorder, these sphingolipids can build up and cause problems. These diseases can be lethal if they're not treated correctly. However, with proper enzyme treatment, these patients can live long lives. I've already covered eye cell disease in a previous video in this section. That's one example of a lysosomal storage disease. Here is the pathway that's affected by the three diseases I'm going to be talking about. You don't necessarily need to memorize this exact order or this, be able to recreate this on your own. I just wanted to help sort of solidify some of the concepts by showing you this graph. So you have the sphingolipids from the cell membrane or elsewhere being broken down into GM2 gangliocide or sphingomyelin. Gangliocide is going to be then acted on by hexaminidase A to become glucocerebroside, and then glucocerebroside is acted on by glucocerebrosidase to become ceramide. Sphingomyelin is acted on by sphingomyelinase to become ceramide. Tay-Sachs, which I give a high yield rating of 7, for those of you who don't know what that is, it is a rating scale from 0 to 10, giving you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for step 1. And if you want to learn more about that, you can head to my website here. Tay-Sachs is a deficiency of the hexaminidase A enzyme. And when you have a deficiency of this enzyme, you're going to have the substrate, GM2 gangliocide, build up and cause issues. Gaucher disease is a deficiency of the glucocerebrosidase enzyme, which leads to a buildup of glucocerebroside. Neiman Pick is a deficiency of sphingomyelinase, which causes a buildup of sphingomyelin. So here's a summary from the previous slide of what you really need to know for step one. It would have been nice if Tay-Sachs was called something like hexaminidase A deficiency, but that's not the case. So it's tough to keep all these straight and not get them confused. So I've made up a couple of memory mnemonics I'm going to share with you. Now these diseases can be pretty serious and horrible for people who actually have them. And these mnemonics are pretty silly. I don't want to make light of the situation or make fun of the situation. It's just in my experience, if the memory mnemonic's a little outrageous, people are more likely to remember it. So here's the first one. Think of a gang of defenders sacking Alabama's quarterback. This picture requires a little bit of imagination because I am limited by certain copyrights. So obviously those of you who are college football fans will know that that's not really Alabama's helmet but it's close enough. And those aren't actually football players. At least back when I played football, we didn't tend to play shirtless with little short shorts, but that's the best I could do. So use your imagination here. So a gang of defenders sacking Alabama's quarterback will let you know that Tay sacks the deficiency of hexaminidase A and GM2 gangliocide builds up. Anyway, this demonic is, I pick my nose with my finger. And that lets you know that Neiman pick is a deficiency of sphingomyelinase, and sphingomyelin builds up. It's important to remember that all three of these diseases that I mentioned are autosomal recessive, and that they're most common in Ashkenazi or Eastern European Jews. It can be tough to differentiate between the different sphingolipidoses based solely on clinical picture because there's a lot of overlap between them and these different disorders can cause a wide range of symptoms. Thankfully, the test writers usually aren't that evil for the most part. Most of these questions will be pretty straightforward. They're just going to say something like, it is this disease, what enzyme is deficient? Or this substrate is building up, what disease is it? However, you are sometimes going to see a little bit of a clinical picture in whatever question you get. So I want to cover a little bit of it here. 
at least in some simple terms. So Tay-Sachs is going to have neurodegeneration, which presents as motor regression in a small child. So somebody had passed certain milestones as far as motor development and then regressed back to an earlier state. Niemann pick also has this. You're going to have a cherry red spot on the retina in Tay-Sachs and Niemann pick and Tay-Sachs, people are going to be easily startled. Gaucher disease is going to have pancytopenia and easy bruising, and then all three of them can have hepatosplenomegaly. Here are a list of related topics that I don't think are nearly as high yield as the three that I covered. They don't show up in questions as often, so I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time memorizing what these things are. If I was feeling a little bit more generous, I'd probably give a couple of these a high yield rating of one, but they're pretty boring to learn about because it's just pure memorization of enzyme name and substrate, and they're easy to get them confused, so I've given them a high yield rating of zero, and I would suggest only focusing on these after you master all the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and you want me to make more, please like my videos on YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I won't bore you with the details about search engine optimization or social proof, but just know that even though it only takes you a couple seconds to do those things, it really helps me out a lot.